Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gaman Singh. In our top story, Attorney General Claude Walker announced today that the Virgin Islands Department of Justice has filed a lawsuit against Terminex. News 2 reporter Stephanie filed this report. March of 2015, Stephen Esmond, along with his wife Teresa and their two boys, Sean and Ryan Esmond, traveled from Delaware to the Virgin Islands on vacation and stayed at a St. John condominium resort. Shortly into their stay, the Esmond family became gravely ill and reports state that Stephen, the father of the family, is still wheelchair bound to this date and his two sons are still enduring paralysis with no sensation to their limbs. Terminex's illegal and unsafe application of pesticides containing methyl bromide had well-publicized and devastating consequences for the Edmonds family. Vacationing in the Virgin Islands and staying at the Serenusa Resort on St. John. After an investigation by the United States Virgin Islands Department of Planning and Natural Resources and the Attorney General's Office, investigators found that methyl bromide, an odorless, colorless gas used to control a wide variety of pests in agriculture, as well as to fumigate wooden pallets, was the cause of the Edmonds family's illnesses. The tragic events at that, result, at that resort resulted in an investigation by DPNR and the Attorney General's office. According to reports, Terminix has already paid out $3 million to the Edmonds family to cover medical expenses and additional $10 million in fines. Stephanie Brown, News 2. Count on two to keep you updated. Well, in other reports, another man accused of participating in a scheme to defraud the government through a property auction has admitted to his role in the conspiracy. Sylvester Warner, 43, of uh, Estate St. Peter, pleaded guilty to taking part in the plot, which occurred during an August 30, 2012 property bid conducted by the Office of the Lieutenant Governor. Warner faced two charges, one count each of a conspiracy and criminally influenced and corrupt organizations act in connection with the crime. However, rather than face a jury, Warner accepted the terms of a closed plea bargain offered by Attorney General Claude Earl Walker. Warner appeared in court for a change of plea hearing on February 3rd and stood before VI Superior Court Judge Michael Dunstan to formally admit to the crime. Under the terms of the plea bargain, Warner entered a guilty plea to the single charge of conspiracy and in exchange for his testimony and full cooperation against the remaining co-defendants, the second count against him will be dismissed. Warner will testify against the other co-defendants and he will be sentenced to a period of one year supervised probation. In all, four men, Warner, Calford, Charleswell, Paul, Sabres and Edward McKenzie were taken into custody and charged in connection with the public auction scheme. Supervisor of Elections Caroline Fox says that the 2017 special election calendar is available now. Any registered voter who meets the requirement for the Office of the Legislature can participate in this special election scheduled to be held on Saturday, April 8, 2017. Nomination packages will be available beginning Tuesday, February 14th at 9 a.m. If you have questions, please feel free to contact the office, St. Thomas at 774-3017, St. Croix at 773-1021, St. John at 776-6535, or you can log on to www.vivote.gov. Turning to crime reports on Sunday at approximately 9.30 p.m., a male called the 911 emergency call center and reported that he heard several shots fired in the area of Home Depot and that a male was uh, lying on the ground. Well, the, upon responding, officers arrived to a grassy area adjacent to the roadway leading to Home Depot. An unresponsive black male was discovered lying face down with what appeared to be at least one gunshot wound to his upper body. The emergency medical technicians arrived on the scene and pronounced the male deceased. The victim was later identified by his next of kin as 48-year-old Don A. Richards of Anna's Retreat. 
At this time, VIPD has no known suspect or suspects regarding this incident. Call them if you can assist in their investigation. Meanwhile, on Friday at approximately 11.20 p.m., several citizens called 911 and reported several shots fired in the area of Bovoni housing community. Citizens also reported a vehicle colliding into the bushes in the vicinity of Building D. Shortly thereafter, a citizen called 911 and reported that they were traveling to the Schneider Regional Medical Center with a gunshot victim. The victim was identified as 23-year-old Mario Huggins of Bovoni Housing Community. The victim sustained at least one gunshot wound to the upper body and succumbed to his injury at the Schneider Regional Medical Center. On February 9th, about 11.28 a.m., officers were dispatched by the 911 call center to a discharging of shots in the Marley Housing Homes in Frederickstead. Here's VIPD with more. Upon arrival, officers made contact with a female individual who stated that she was outside of her home with her boyfriend and children who were riding their bikes when three individuals in a blue vehicle rolled down the passenger side window and started shooting at them. She then dropped to the ground, grabbed the children and ran into the apartment. The vehicle continued shooting and fled the area. No one was injured. Patrol units searched the area and located the vehicle. Upon processing the vehicle, evidence revealed that the two individuals in the car were involved in the Marley housing shooting. On February 9, 2017, at about 11.39 p.m., 24-years-old Okimo J. Haywood and 24-years-old Kenrick E. Lewis were both arrested and charged with assault third, reckless endangerment first, discharging and aiming a firearm. Haywood and Lewis were remanded to the Bureau of Corrections Detention Center pending advice of rights hearing. Also in other crime reports, on February 10th, about 6.20 p.m., 57-year-old Ethelbert Burt Benjamin Jr. was arrested on a warrant issued by a Superior Court magistrate. Benjamin's arrest warrant stems from 1998 to 2000 for aggravated rape first, unlawful sexual contact first, and child abuse. Bail for Benjamin was set at $150,000. This is Benjamin's third arrest for three different victims, according to VIPD. Thursday, September 29, 2016, he was arrested for rape first degree. A 20-year-old female made a statement that he raped her after offering her a beverage to drink. He was again on November 22, 2016, and uh, charged with uh, aggravated rape in the first degree, arrested, unlawful sexual contact in the first degree, and child abuse. A female family member stated that he sexually assaulted her. Crime Stoppers USVI is in receipt of an anonymous reward of $10,000 allocated for information leading to the arrest of the rapist reported in the East End, St. Thomas. This community reward is in addition to the maximum reward of $2,500 offered by Crime Stoppers. If you have information regarding this case, please contact Crime Stoppers VI at 1 800 222 8477. The website you can log on to. You can also call the Criminal Investigation Bureau DV unit at 340 774 2211 or 911. Senator Novell Francis Jr., who is vice chairman of the Committee on Homeland Security, Justice and Public Safety, is once again reaching out to the community organizations and law enforcement entities to move quickly to implement crime prevention. He said hearing reports of homicides every few days and having nine homicides reported just six weeks into the year. The new year is cause for alarm. He said without traffic initiatives, criminals can, can traffic uh, illegal weapons to fuel their criminal activities without risk of interception by police. Measures such as improved street lighting, surveillance cameras, routine traffic stops, and increased police enforcement are proven strategies. He said he will continue to push anti-gang, no loitering, and firearm importation measures through the legislative process. Well, in a 3-0 to zero decision, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled against the Trump administration upholding the suspension of the travel ban on seven Muslim-majority nations. But the president is vowing to take the case all the way to the Supreme Court. Kristen Holmes is in Washington. I think they might want a handshake. President Trump is welcoming his neighbor from the north today, hoping to keep the conversation focused on issues like trade. We're also doing some cross-border things that will make it a lot easier for trade and a lot better and a lot faster for trade. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau walked a fine line on Trump's we controversial travel ban, which he has decried in the past. The last thing Canadians expect 
uh, is uh, for me to come down and uh, lecture another country on how they choose to govern themselves. Today's visit coming as President Trump is facing questions about members of his inner circle. National Security Advisor Michael Flynn reportedly on thin ice as administration officials say they think Flynn did discuss sanctions on a phone call with the Russian ambassador before President Trump was sworn into office. A source saying the president expressed displeasure with Flynn to aides in recent days, with concern among many that he misled Vice President Pence, who went on national TV to defend Flynn after it was reported that a call had taken place. Now lawmakers from both sides want answers. We need an independent investigation. We need to know exactly what conversations he had with the Russians during the transition period. Chief of Staff Reince Priebus also in the spotlight for the wrong reasons. Newsmax Media CEO Christopher Ruddy, who spent time with the president in Florida, indicating displeasure with Priebus. I think there's a lot of weakness coming out of the chief of staff. I think Reince Priebus, good guy, well-intentioned, but he clearly doesn't know how the federal agencies work. In Washington, I'm Kristen Holmes. Keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch with the New York Stock Exchange. According to the numbers, we're going to see the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P up, Dow 142, NASDAQ 29, S&P 500 up 12. Coming up on News 2, our black history recognition and much more. She was a politician and civil rights leader. She earned her place in history as the first African-American elected to the Texas Senate after Reconstruction and the first Southern black woman elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. That's coming up next. Welcome back. Governor Kenneth Mapp assembled a cabinet meeting recently at Government House in St. Croix to address the government's current liquidity position. The cabinet members discussed the deficit for the remaining fiscal year with an estimated budget deficit of $98 million as, as of January 31st, 2017. Earlier this week, the Office of Management and Budget requested that each department agency reduce their projected expenditures for the remainder of the year by 10%. Dialogue with departments, agencies provided insights on how the proposed 10% reduction will affect operations absent any legislative action on sin taxes and timeshare fees. The governor stated that without the shared contribution and commitment by all branches and instrumentalities of government, our cash position, he says, will continue to erode and result in delays. Agency heads were instructed to refine their reduction measures for a follow-up cabinet meeting. Virgin Islands first responders and Smith Bay Community Action Foundation, they held a massive cleanup of the Friedenhoi ballpark on Saturday from about 9 till about 3. The ob objective of the neighborhood cleanup, they say, is to increase public support and cooperation towards improving our Caribbean paradise environment and surroundings through a variety of activities geared towards attracting participants from local schools, social organizations, and neighborhoods to come to carry out cleanup drives in the community. That includes cutting and clearing clearing overgrown bush, repainting various structures with positive messages, cleaning up remains of trash in uh, pedestrian areas, tidying up the streets and more. The aim is to promote public awareness on community cleanliness, environmental protection and effective use of resources. Senator Brian Smith held his first town hall meeting at the Cleon Henrietta Creaky Conference Room on Friday and met with residents of the community who shared their concerns, and some of them are lack of maintenance of the cemetery in Cruz Bay, in which the senator said he has contacted administrators and they say that they will repair the area. Additionally, the cemetery in Cruz Bay has almost outgrown its capacity and there needs to be other options. That's another concern. Separately, residents also complained about the library that is closed. The senator said he will look into having a mobile library for the youths. Residents shared that the sin tax will harm small businesses and inquired if the senator supports the proposal. In response, Senator Smith said, we all know that government is in a serious financial predicament. The sin tax, as proposed by the governor, will be 
uh, catastrophic in its initial phase. However, he said the majority discussed this matter and what is feasible to both the government as well as the business community. He said we are developing a plan that will be uh, palatable for everyone. Report cards will be distributed to Sheldon Mali High School 10th, 11th and 12th grade students at the end of the school day on Tuesday, February 14th. Just a reminder for parents, report cards for 9th grade students will be distributed to parents only. Also on February 14th, following the schedule below, 9th graders Team S, that's from 9.50 a.m. to 11.20. 9th graders Team K is from 12.05 to 1.35. Ninth graders Team A is from 1.40 to 3.10. You can call the school for more information. Meanwhile, Virgin Isles Department of Education State Office of Special Education will conduct school year 2016-2017 leadership training on discipline, suspension, and expulsion conference. That's on Thursday, February 15th and Friday, February 17th in the St. Croix District at the Buccaneer Hotel Brass Parrot Room. The school district's superintendents, deputy superintendents, school administrators, counselors, coordinators, and junior and high school special education department chair persons. They're expected to participate in the two-day training. This year's leadership training will be conducted by attorneys Lee uh, Manasavet and Megan Pasaforo from the firm Brustein and Manasavet PLLC, acclaimed special education professionals that have represented schools and school districts across the country. Well, My Plate, which is the new food guide musical that comes to school on St. Thomas and St. John, praised by First Lady Michelle Obama and features Broadway performers. Virgin Isles Department of Education is inviting the community to enjoy three nights of special performances of My Plate, the new food guide musical. The live show will feature 250 Julius E. Sproul, Lockhart, and Bowski Elementary School students performing alongside Romel Rowe performer and choreographer in six Broadway shows. The high energy nutrition themed musical has been praised by First Lady Michelle Obama. Performances began today, first at the Julius Brow Elementary School. Lockhart Elementary School is on Tuesday, February 14th from uh, 2 p.m. It's a 45 minute show. Bowski Elementary School, it's Wednesday, February 15th, 1 p.m. And all performances are free and open to the public, so be sure to go out and show your support. Valentine's Day is coming up. Love will definitely be in the air this, this, this time around for dozens of couples who will be heading over to Love City Trunk Bay, to be exact, on St. John, for the annual Celebration of Love Vow Renewal Ceremony. That's on Valentine's Day, February 14th at 5 p.m. St. John's Barefoot Minister Anne-Marie Porter invites couples to celebrate Valentine's Day in a meaningful, joyful way by renewing their marriage vows. 1,230 couples have participated in the past 13 years. All are welcome. No pre-registration. Just show up February 14th, 5 p.m., Trunk Bay Beach on St. John. Time for a moment in black history. Barbara Jordan, a politician and civil rights leader, was born in Houston, Texas. She earned her place in history as the first African-American elected to the Texas Senate after Reconstruction and the first Southern black woman elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. Jordan began her career teaching political science at Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. In 1960, she returned to Houston, passed the bar, and started a private law practice. She won a seat in the Texas Senate in 1966 and elected to Congress in 1972. She received the Presidential Medal of Freedom and more. She died on January 17, 1996. The Coral Bay Community Council, Eudorican High School, and Gift Hill School, they came together to organize a unique art competition on Thursday, February 2nd. High school students from Eudorican and Gift Hill, they met at the Resource Depot on St. John to make art from something we have plenty of in the Virgin Islands, trash. The art competition's goal was to get the youth uh, in the Virgin Islands to consider the amount of waste created in the territory what can be done about the issue, and how to start thinking about trash as a resource. The two dozen students were separated into six teams. 
given time to organize their ideas. And then from all electronics, scrap metals, plastics, tires, and other assorted waste materials were asked to make sculptures reflective of cultural and environmental aspects here in the Virgin Islands. The groups had 90 minutes to put together their art. The winning sculpture was selected from a panel of judges. The winning team was made up of Tyreek Morton and Maveen Parcel from Gift Hill and Deandra Childwell and Cheyenne Richardson from Eudora Ken who constructed a mangrove scene from trash. They will be displaying the art the students made in Franklin Powell Park on St. John on Tuesday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. More clouds across the area than what we're used to as we take a look at our current satellite what we're really seeing the remnants of an old cold front attached to this area of low pressure way out in the Atlantic it's really begun to fall apart quite a bit however so these showers that we were expecting definitely not as strong we've had a couple of pop-up ones you can see some of those off towards our north most of that lagging moisture over parts of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico though we have seen uh, some of those showers throughout our, our time That's that's going to stick uh, with us throughout tonight as well. There should be very brief passing showers for us here. And then as we head into tomorrow, well, we'll stick with those passing showers or two. Overall, our uh, trades are fairly light. We do continue to see a rip current risk in through tonight as well, right around 10 p.m. with uh, associated with the, the storms passing in through the Atlantic. St. Thomas for tomorrow, looking at a shower or two as well, 83 degrees for our high. And once again, down towards St. Croix, just a little bit less chance of seeing those showers. Now, as far as the water is concerned, I did say uh, this rip current risk, especially on the north facing uh, beaches, especially out near the points. Uh, our waves two to four feet. Winds on the northeast four tomorrow, 10 to 15 knots. Now, on the Caribbean side of things, our winds are just slightly less here. Northeast five to 10 knots and our waves around two to four feet. Here's a look at your extended forecast. We are showing uh, we're going to warm up as we head towards the latter half of this week, Friday into Saturday as well. We're going to be at 84 degrees. Stray shower, passing sun, or passing shower in store for us here. And then as we head uh, into next week, it's going to be a pretty similar trade wind flow condition. Fairly light as that area of high pressure continues to push across the Atlantic. Back to you. Thank you for that. It is time for our news to weather picture by Kiara Astri of the Ricardo Richards Elementary School sharing this typical VI weather that, of course, always includes the sunshine. And we can feel the rays there, Kiara. Thank you. Send us your news to weather picture to the address on the screen and be sure to include all the information we need and then tune in to see it right here on News 2. That is all for now. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sandra Gomez Singh. Have a wonderful evening.